I was at this birthday party, this Pan Am themed birthday party, and it was all like old school, like 60s, 70s music. And this Frank Sinatra song came on, I think Strangers in the Night. And my dad used to play that around the house all the time. So every time I hear it, I just completely like hear my dad singing it around the house and that memory always comes up. In that moment, I realized that I'd come, I'd come full circle on something. The show that I worshiped, uh, Get Smart, I spent fourth grade and fifth grade with my friend Bill pretending to be control agents and we, I, was, I was control agent 44 and we played that game every single day after school until Get Smart was actually on at 5.30 and then we'd watch it. And it was 69 or 70 that Don Adams won the same award that I won 33 years later. I, I realized how important that was for me that it, it wasn't just an actor I loved, it was an actor on a half hour comedy on NBC that had completely uh, changed how I saw acting and, and it, it created a real ambition in me that I was able to, to fulfill. I think because I'm a performer, I always hearken back to like childhood memories that pertain to like performing and like sort of that light bulb moment. For me, it was the sixth grade production of Guys and Dolls where I got to play Miss Adelaide. It was, in my mind, like the peak of my life. <laughs> like, it just was not gonna get any better than playing Adelaide. I think about that quite often. I think that was the experience that really solidified for me that I wanted to, to try and do this professionally. I have had such a, a tough time, you know, and I've been very open about my mental health issues. I suffer from anxiety and I have severe ADD and I act up and uh, you know the, I remember people always saying to me you know Howard I was always Howard as a child because people were always angry at me I was Howard more than I was ever Howie and they'd go Howard there is a time and a place and you know what I found the time when I grew up and I found the place and I feel like nobody feels more blessed and more lucky and more thrilled than I am to be doing what I'm doing, where I'm doing it, with who I'm doing it, and how it's being received. I would, this is 180 degrees where I would have ever dreamed I would be. And I know a lot of people in this business, this is a pursuit. For me, it's just a happening. His whole point was to enjoy the process. Well, I remember on, on the set of White Squall, Jeff Bridges saying to me that the experience you have making the project will almost always exceed the final product itself. He said, so his whole point was to enjoy the process, you know, and to not be looking ahead to how it's going to perform or what the reception will be, because we have no control over that. What we do have control over is our participation, our commitment, and our focus to the thing. You know, when I was younger, I think my, my ideas, my dreams were different. Now it's be myself, make sure the character lives and breathes. Now that was one thing that I never heard enough when I was younger was just be you. Just be you. You're enough. You're what we're looking for, being you. Because I think when I was younger, I, was, I did a lot of stage work, and when I jumped on the stage, everything was about a character I was playing, and I was playing these odd, quirky, off characters. And so whenever I jumped into anything in front of a camera, in the real, real world kind of sense of, of, of um, the storytelling, I felt like I needed to, to put on a character. And really, I just needed to kind of be myself. I was a French horn player. Uh, got a college scholarship playing the French horn. There was only one decent rock song that you could play in the French horn, and it's you can't always get what you want. It's the opening of the Rolling Stones song, and it, there's a beautiful French horn solo. Anyway, um, sorry, I shouldn't be humming the French horn. That's because I just probably guaranteed that that will make it into this clip. But that was the only song where, no, 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 I swear, the French horn can be cool, you know, that sort of thing. 
Um, so that would, that would be uh, my go-to song to try to at least explain, no, oh, it's a beautiful instrument. Have I ever heard anything? Yeah, you've heard this. So I get Meet the Press, I'm getting this job, and my daughter's paying attention that, oh, dad's got a new job. In her mind, he's always with the president. Oh, what's President Obama doing? You can't come home today because of President Obama, you know. They had their own views of the president that had nothing to do with politics and everything to do with when daddy came home. But when I got the job, my daughter says, oh, you've got a new job. Are you gonna do something cool like the weather? Or are you still doing politics? And it was like, wah, 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 wah. And it was like the classic, how your kids keep you grounded. That's how impressed my 10 year old at the time was with my job. Now, she's weirdly more impressed, but she never says it.